here we go. Our preseason favorites uh, for the 5A ranks. We actually had a tie at the top of the Inland Empire League. Uh, preseason coaches poll Lakeland and Sandpoint both tied. Uh, Bishop Kelly, the favorite over in District 3, the Southern Idaho Conference. Twin Falls won our preseason coaches poll uh, in District 4, the Great Basin Conference. Same thing in District 5, guys. We had a tie at the top. Pocatello and Preston both tied for first in our preseason coaches poll. And then the Skyline Grizzlies, the favorites over in District 6, the High Country Conference. Skaggs, uh, Lakeland, Sandpoint, little wrinkle this year. Lewiston dropping down from the 6A ranks, but at least according to our preseason polling, uh, it's it's still going to be the same old, same old Lakeland and Sandpoint duking it out. You know, that's, that's the thing. I kind of look at it. You like think Lewiston coming down from 6A, oh, there's going to be, you know, an automatic, you know, leg up on that because of the competition they've been playing the last few years, the numbers and enrollment. Lewiston's got some unknown question marks there. So, you know, they're running in a new quarterback, new running back. Uh, replacing a lot of the guys up front on the offensive line. I look at, but you, let's talk about Sandpoint and Lakeland. You talk about those two teams. You know, I think it's strengths and weaknesses where where Lakeland strong, Sandpoint maybe that's their weakness or not. I want to say weakness, but maybe the part where they don't have is maybe as strong or as much depth. Um, Lakeland's a pretty balanced club, and they're bringing in. You know, I I like the reshuffling they did with some of the coaching staff bringing Tim Kiefer back to run the defense. Um, that, I thought that was an awesome move in the offseason to get him back involved with the program. Um, you know, the Court Milks has moved over to run some of the offensive line stuff. Um, Tim Anderson's running the, the DBs and receivers, and, like, they got talent on talent. There's a lot. That was one thing last year. They were so injury-bitten last year that those younger kids got a lot of playing time. They took some massive lumps in a few games. Um, but that's paying – I think it's going to pay dividends this year. You look at their size, they – they got beef up front. They got guys like Carter Vanek on the offensive line. He's an absolute monster. Um, you know, that team's going to be loaded for bear. They're going to have good quarterback play. We know they're going to be able to run the ball. Lovely wheels back. Um, so at running back, they've got a dynamic. I mean, he's a dynamic running back, in my opinion. I think that that team's going to be uh, pretty darn tough to beat the way they run the ball and control on offense. Sandpoint, you know, you look at them defensively, they're going to be pretty good. I think they're going to, then they're especially their front seven is going to be tough. They got a lot of big dudes. We've known them in the past to have, you know, nice, good size offensive linemen that just get down and dirty in the trenches. Um, you know, that's no, no shortage this year. They've got more guys up front. They hit the weight room in the off season. They've been looking really good. Um, you know, they've got experience coming back at the quarterback position too. Does Sandpoint? I mean, that game, Towards the end of the year, that Lakeland Sandpoint game is, and I'm, I'm, I, I could see why this is a dice roll as far as who's favored in the IEL because they're both so balanced. I honestly, right now, sitting here, if it's on paper, Lakeland's got the edge in my mind, and uh, you don't always say that. You know, we've seen Sandpoint, um, you know, running rough shot in the conference and doing really well at the state level, but you know, Lakeland's gonna. I think they're going to turn some heads this year, especially with that schedule they've got. They're going to have some favorable wins in their hip pocket. I realistically could see all three teams out of this conference, though, making it to state. Yeah, Sandpoint is going to play Twin Falls. We'll talk about that on the schedule here in just a moment. So I'll, I'll just pretty briefly talk about uh, the Bruins uh, over in District 4. It's going to come down to Twin Falls and Minico again. Uh, the polling in our preseason poll was very close. Twin Falls did just edge out Minico. Uh, Twin Falls lost more to graduation, but they were also the better team a year ago. So uh, Amos Kuhn is back at running back for the Bruins. They've got a new quarterback in Will Marlowe uh, and overall looking to replace 18 seniors. But Ben Coring does a fantastic job with that Twin Falls unit. Minico, you know, they bring back Preston Sonner Cranny, who was a, a dynamic running back last year. And it's a little different Minico than we're used to seeing. We got used to Keelan McCaffrey coaching him up in that wing T. He's now at Centennial. And instead, Sherm Blazer, the former CUNA and Hawaii coach, has come and they've gone from the wing T to a four wide. And so if you haven't been to a Minico game in a, in a year or two, uh, <laughs> it might it might look a little different, but they're a fun team to watch uh, as well, Logan. Yeah, no, and I mean, I saw them a couple times last year, and they, like you said, making the switch. They had a lot of coaches move away from Minico over the last couple of years, so definitely a different style offense that should be fun to watch. It came down to the end last year between those two, and uh, like you said, looks like it's probably going to shake out that way again this year. Yeah, let's look at uh, Bishop Kelly over in District 3, Logan. They are the reigning uh, state champions, uh, 
last year 4A, now this year 5A, won an all-time classic with Hillcrest where uh, Hillcrest had a chance at the game-winning field goal as time expired. It missed. Bishop Kelly hung on and won. Uh, I'll admit, I, d- I was not a believer in Bishop Kelly last year. I kept, <laughs> I kept saying they're, they're, they're walking on thin ice, but they were able to skate their way through. And, I mean, they bring back a lot of talented pieces again this year. Yeah, they do. They do lose a couple of really big pieces. I think you mentioned it earlier. Peter Minner is gone. Uh, the player of the year, uh, Rakeem Johnson, is gone as well. Cooper Cameron is gone. They, they do lose some players, but this is a team that went undefeated last year and rolled through their conference schedule, <clears throat> really rolled through the playoffs up until that state championship and faced a really good Hillcrest team. But I don't think we can count out Bishop Kelly. Um, they really have been the, the, the top of the 4A or the 5A now, SIC, the last couple of years. Emmett has given them some trouble um you know here and there but uh right now with with all the pieces they bring back you know a lot of their defense is back um they're, they're still going to get you know they're, they're still going to get theirs as they say right they're still going to be right in the mix of things um i mean you, you can't count out what uh you know what coach Kulig has done since moving over right and goes wins of state championship his first year and you know they, they look stacked and loaded to go once again I think if anybody's going to be able to compete with them, I think it's Skyview. Um, I think Skyview is a team to watch out for. Last year, Skyview had two losses to five or to now six A teams, Middleton and CUNA. And then their other two losses on the season were to Bishop Kelly and Hillcrest, the two teams in the state championship. So they didn't lose anybody, didn't lose to anybody in their own classification that, that did not play for a state championship. And so they're they're a team to watch out for. They've got good returning players. Um, you know, for the Hawks as well, like Mason Cron is back, um, an all conference player there, uh, for Skyview. So you know, just, a, just one of the great players, Henry Downey as well, will be back for the Hawks. So that, that's another team to watch out for, um, in the SIC this year. Uh, it'll be fun to see what Shane McClellan can do with Valley View. We can see, you know, the, you know, they, they're a team that always lurks around, right? You don't want to see Valley View in the playoffs. They seem to always show up and make a name for themselves and make some noise and pull an upset. So uh, be on the lookout for Valley view to, to be an improved team this year as well. Yep. And uh, Napa moving down uh, complicates things a little bit too. in that SIC uh, let's wrap up with East Idaho. We see up here on the, on the screen, Pocatello and Preston tied for our, it, there's only three teams. It's them in century. Uh, Pokey has been the premier team in this conference for a long time. They've gotten deep into the playoffs, but that, that kind of signature program defining class has moved on. Right. And echo Hawk, the electric running back uh, is gone. A lot of their wide receivers and defensive backs are gone. So the question for Pocatello is, can Dave spill it in his 10th year? Uh, kind of like Highland pull up those JV kids, uh, and, and find that same success. Preston was very young last year, really took their lumps, uh, season opener against Lakeland, uh, Preston's, uh, junior quarterback, Reggie Larson gets injured. They have to bring in this freshman named Carter Perry. He had an incredible story. He overcame leukemia, uh, at, to, to return to the football field, uh, which was pretty significant. And, and then the kid did all right. Carter Perry did so well. In fact, that he's going to be their quarterback this year. Reggie Larson has moved to wide receiver full time. And so for Preston, uh, it's going to be interesting to see can those younger players continue to take a step forward. And then uh, in District 6, of course, the High Country Conference, you've got the Skyline Grizzlies. Yeah, they lost to Monty Morell. He transferred to Rigby, but they bring back Zion Crockett, who was a fantastic uh, backslash receiver. Um, they do bring back some good defensive players, uh, especially at the linebacker level and probably one of my favorite uh, guys, uh, Taylor Taylor. That's right. First name Taylor, last name Taylor for the <laughs> Skyline Skyline Grizzlies. He'll Thanks, be a Mom. big part. <laughs> right. He'll be a big part of that defense. Um, Skyline did lose Atticus Furiman, who was set to be a four-year starter on the offensive line, um, but he he injured uh, he had an injury in the offseason and, and won't be able to play this year. So that is kind of a bummer for Skyline there. Hillcrest was very close in our preseason polling, and Blackfoot is a team that's getting a lot of buzz uh, early on in the uh, 6A ranks as well. Let's take a look at the this is the beefiest schedule of any of the classifications here in week one, guys. So lots of lots of items on the menu here for the class five A week one schedule. Logan, you get to bat lead off this time. Give me one All game right. you're keeping an eye on. 
Brandon, I really like uh, the Skyview Minico game. Um, I think it's a it's one that you want to keep an eyeball on, um, see how this goes. I mentioned Skyview, maybe a team that's that's lurking. They've overcome a lot over the last couple of years. Made it to the state playoffs last year and knocked off Shelley in the first round. Minico, we obviously know what they're about. They uh, are predicted to finish first or second in their league, um, and and you, I just think that the, this will tell a lot of story both ways, right? Is Minico still where they were at a year ago? Is Skyview ready to take that next step? I think this will tell a lot. Even, you know, if, if it's a close game, I still think both teams walk away happy. If one gets blown out, I think that there's going to be um, some serious things that need to be looked at. But a close game, I think, will be a good sign for both of these teams moving forward. So excited to see what happens uh, over in Rupert in this, uh, in this game on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, if I'm looking at the board of games here, uh, I think the one that jumps out to me, I'll, I'll save twin false standpoint for skags. Cause I know he really wants to break that down. Um, I will tell you, uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see Canyon Ridge at Emmett. Uh, both of these teams made the playoffs last year. Canyon Ridge is kind of the the third team that that is being considered in terms of that Great Basin Conference behind Twin Falls and Minico. And can Coach Juan Alvarado in his second season continue to build up this Riverhawks program, taking on an Emmett team that, you know, at this point, if you doubt Rich Hargett's coaching abilities, I mean, right. I don't, I got, I don't know what to tell you. He he takes, uh, he takes limited resources in terms of roster and play i mean emmett is one of the smallest 5a schools in fact emmett is playing down a level in all of their other fall sports soccer volleyball etc they're playing at the 4a level well they're too successful so they got to stay at the 5a level for football coach Hargett last year uh had a couple of injuries to quarterbacks had to move some guys around and and just continued to do a fantastic job so i i think emmett's going to be pretty good again this year my question is as Canyon Ridge gotten better, this will be a good measuring stick for Coach Alvarado and the River Hawks. All right, Skaggs, give me one. Well, you, you said you wanted me to break down that Twin Falls Sandpoint game. And, I mean, there's another game that's standing out there on two that you guys kind of skimmed over. But I think that Skyview Minico game is going to be absolutely stellar. I, I think you made a great pick there, um, Logan. But, yeah, this, right. Twin Falls, this Twin Falls Sandpoint game is going to be uh, very interesting to see. I mean, it's got playoff flavor. I mean, you look at both these teams, they've got – uh, the pedig- the playoff pedigree coming in that Twin Falls has had some success as of late, and uh, Sandpoint's had their successes too. They've graduated a couple of really really talented classes. You know how Sandpoint going to replace guys like Max Frank? Um, that's going to be a really interesting thing to see. And um, you know that that that's a team though that you look at the talent they've had at the JV level. You kind of look. I know that not everybody talks about JV football or freshman football around the state of Idaho, but Sandpoint's JV team last year was pretty darn good. And uh, they've got talent. They, they've they been growing that program the right way, starting with their little guy programs and stuff like that, building that from within. And uh, they're starting to see fruits of their labor. Coach Knowles is a phenomenal coach. I look at him and what he's done there with, with Sandpoint. Um, I think, you know, you look at like the echelon of coaches in the state of Idaho. He's right there with the rest of them. I mean, that guy can flat coach. He's got a great staff around him. Uh, that's going to be a great ball game on, on Friday night, Twin Falls and Sandpoint. Uh, the other one that stood out to me that nobody said, which I was kind of surprised, is that Shelly Preston game. I think is going to be really interesting. Something to keep an eye on. Um, two teams, you know, with kind of different storylines coming into the game, but they're both teams that have playoff aspirations. And and you know, frankly, the rosters there that that could say like, hey, yeah, this genuinely could be a playoff team. Um, granted, you have a 16 team field at 5A, but uh, that's a game I think that people are sleeping on a little bit just because some of the other games out there look so good. Yeah, Shelly is uh, working in a new head coach, Jason Bird, who played for Shelly and then played running back at the University of Idaho. Will the run and russets continue under former coach Josh Wells? Man, they love to pound the ball in between the tackles. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a fun uh, schedule of games, though, uh, for the Class 5A ranks here in Week 1.